Hey everybody, welcome back to Barter Hordes. My name is Robert. Happy Friday. Happy first full day of spring here in the United States. Um, it seems a little hard to celebrate spring right now with what's going on, and I promise I'm not going to talk about the coronavirus and all the political implications in this video. I'm going to save my rants for October and November when our votes count. Um, I did finish three books this week, almost a fourth, and I've started several new ones, some of which I can't talk about. Um, last week in the video, I asked you if you had any objections to me talking about booktube prize titles, since I'm not judging, um, on my channel. And almost to a person, you said, no, there's so many reviews out there that my adding my take on it, since I'm not judging, is not gonna matter. Well, it turns out that I am gonna have to judge this first round uh, because we lost a judge this week. And so uh, to step in for that judge, I am scrambling to read the books from that group that I haven't already read. I'll, I'll make it on time, so that's not gonna be a problem. Um, but I don't wanna talk about them before the results are announced. So I'll let you know which books those are, so I just won't review them. The first one I finished is uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates' debut novel, The Water Dancer. Um, Coates is obviously known as a nonfiction writer. He's written about the Obama years. He's written about um, a lot of social, um, social issues. And this is his first attempt at fiction. And because he's so well known as a nonfiction writer, this book got a lot of attention, a lot of what I think is maybe overhype when it came out. And I liked parts of it, but it never really touched me emotionally. It's the story of a young man, I think he's 19 or 20 at the time of the book, um, who is a slave in Virginia, but his father is actually the plantation owner, so he's mixed, but he doesn't get recognized as, of course, a legitimate son, even though the father really cares for him and sees in him a lot of worth. Um, he does try to escape and gets caught, but falls into the hands of some agents of the Underground Railroad. And the rest of the book is his experience becoming an agent for, they just call it the Underground in the book, but it's the Underground Railroad. In fact, he even meets Harriet Tubman uh, in Philadelphia. And so it's, it's, it's a really powerful and an emotional topic, but Coates's style is just distanced enough in tone and diction and style that it never really sings in an emotional way to me that I expected this kind of a topic to do. And so I, I know he's trying to show that the narrator is educated and intelligent, but it kind of pushes away that emotional connection that a story of this magnitude should have. And so I kind of have mixed feelings about it. Um, I admire his thinking, he's brilliantly smart. Uh, I just didn't think the dialogue and the tone of this book allowed me to connect with it in the emotional way that I expected to because of the topic. The second one I finished is also a book two prize book, but it's not what I'm judging. Uh, it's a nonfiction book, Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. And as I wrote in my, um, Goodreads review of this, I didn't really want to read this book right now because I've read so many depressing books recently, including some about mental health, that I just w I wasn't really in the right space for this, or so I thought. But right from the very beginning, Gottlieb's writing style and the way she has chosen to lay out the story that she's giving us in this book is so engaging that I ended up thoroughly enjoying this book. It's really on the borderline between four and five stars for me. Um, Gottlieb is a therapist. She uh, had a background in journalism before she got into clinical psychology, uh, but since then she's combined the two. And she's telling the story of four people who are in therapy. One of them is herself. She's talking about her own therapy sessions about an unexpected breakup that she's having trouble processing. Um, and then she's talking about three of her own patients and their histories. 
and all three of these patients, well, two of the three of these patients initially are really hard to like. And even Gottlieb talks about how difficult it is to stay neutral with the beginning stages of some patients. Uh, the third one, you immediately fall for um, her story. But by the end of the book, all four of these stories have progressed in such amazing ways that you really are just bound up in these people's lives by the end of this book. It's really an amazing piece of writing. I, I was not initially expecting this one to be so captivating, and it really was. So that was a very pleasant surprise. And then the third one that I just finished yesterday is one of the books that I am judging in this round, so I can't say anything about it other than to tell you it was Girl by Edna O'Brien, which is a story about the schoolgirls in Nigeria who were kidnapped by Boko Haram and what at least one of these girls goes through uh, as a result of that ordeal. That's the story that she's telling here. So those are the three that I finished. I'm nearly finished with Duck's Newburyport by Lucy Ellman. I'm not judging this one, although it is a book two prize book. And I finished 900 pages. I have about 85 or 88 left to go before the end of this thing. And I don't expect anything to happen in the last 88 pages because nothing's happened in the first 900. Um, so I'll talk about it more next week, but I, I just think the emperor has no clothes on this one. The other one that I'm in the middle of is one that I am reading as a judge, so I won't talk about it either, and that's The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Leftery. It is the story of a man from Aleppo, Syria, and his family, and they get caught up in the Civil War and end up having to become refugees. Uh, and it's told through his point of view, and it's his story. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. I'm about two thirds of the way finished with that one. And then the other two that I will start later today that I have to read for the book two prize, and I have 10 days to finish them, so I should be fine, is um, Bernardine Evaristo's Girl, Woman, Other, which of course was a co-winner of the Booker Prize, and Steph Cha's book, Your House Will Pay, which I really don't know much about at all. Uh, so those are the four that I'll have going uh, this weekend. I'll finish Ducks Newburyport probably tomorrow, and I'll probably finish The Beekeeper of Aleppo in two or three more days. And so that leaves me the final week and a half to concentrate on the two new ones that I have to read. The uh, Fortunately, I had already read two of the six in this group, so I only had to scramble to read four, and none of them is terribly long. So um, I was lucky I could, I could get to them before the deadline. On the movie project, I did watch the next movie in um, my AFI list of 100 movies, the updated, more recent list, and the movie that I watched was Raiders of the Lost Ark, which of course I've seen a couple of times before. I saw it when it first came out, I saw it again with my son, I may have seen it one or two other times too. And it's entertaining, I mean, it's kind of cartoonish. Uh, it's stereotypical, it's not realistic necessarily, but it's fun. It's, it's a funny adventure romp. Um, my, one of my favorite scenes is when Indiana Jones is in the marketplace and he's having to fight off all these would-be assassins and this big bad assassin in his black outfit and turban starts waving around this big sword and the whole marketplace is going ooh and Indiana just looks at it and pulls out a pistol and shoots him. Um, so it's that kind of almost slapstick humor um, but not quite, you know, it's not quite uh, the Three Stooges type humor, but it is kind of fun. Uh, so for right now, that one will appear in my top five from this project. But as I mentioned to you a week or two ago, I haven't seen many so far in this project from this list that I've really enjoyed. So it's not that hard to get into the top five today. By the time I make my way through the entire hundred, it will be pretty hard to crack the top five. The next one that came up by the random generator is gonna be a little more difficult to watch because I don't really wanna buy it, and that's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You can't rent this one. Fortunately, I think I can do a free trial of Disney Plus for seven days, and I can watch it there without having to buy it or subscribe to Disney Plus. Uh, so that'll be the next one I watch in this project. Uh, if you look in the description box for the music project, I listen to a lot more music this week than I have been in recent weeks. 
uh, some of the pieces that came up in the random generator were the kinds of music that I can listen to while I'm reading. They're not too distracting. A lot of Mozart, a lot of Haydn, things like that. But it also had some really great symphonic works that I love. Uh, two symphonies by Tchaikovsky, the, the fourth and the fifth. They came up back to back, so I'm not sure how random the random generator is. Uh, but the fourth is my, my favorite Tchaikovsky symphony, and so I really enjoyed listening to that again. And then the piece that I probably enjoyed the most was listening to a new recording of uh, Modest Mussorgsky's Pictures at an Exhibition. Um, that piece is actually written originally for piano, but it's not performed very often on piano because it's just really hard. But Maurice Ravel did an orchestral orchestration of the piece, and that has been the piece that's become famous, is the orchestra version of it. And that's what's actually on this list, is the orchestra version. I have a recording of um, the Irish pianist Barry Douglas, who when he won the Tchaikovsky International Piano Competition many years ago, um, he played pictures at an exhibition in the semifinal round and the Russian audience gave him an immediate standing ovation. Uh, and he ended up winning that year too. I think he was the first guy since maybe Van Cliburn to win from the West. Uh, and I saw him play in London on one of my trips there, although he wasn't playing that piece. But I have a recording of him playing that piece and it really is spectacular. But this week I was listening to the orchestral version and I'll, I'll put a, picture of one of the orchestral versions that I really like um, up in the corner. All right, everybody, uh, please stay safe, follow the guidelines, do what you can to keep everybody around you safe. As it gets warmer, it's going to be harder and harder to keep people inside. It's 85 here today, and looking out the window, it's the kind of day that makes you want to go out and do things, but we just can't. We have to be safer. So please follow the guidelines, stay safe, keep those around you safe, be healthy, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye, everybody.